This Thursday night football props edition of the Sports Game and Podcast is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog has just added Pick'em Scorchers, where you can win 100x. Plus, every Sunday they're giving away $100,000. Use promo code SGPN at Underdog Fantasy for a 100% deposit bonus up to $500. We're also brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. And we're giving away three thousand dollars in our NFL second chance survivor contest presented by Corey Pinkston and Barking Dog Properties. Free to enter, just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survivor. This is Nate Collins. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. On to week seven, Sean. On to week seven. We are here talking National Football League, NFL, Thursday night props. Thursday, I love Thursday night football, but I, I feel it's too like, early. What do you mean? It's too early in the week. Oh, no, not, a, not at all for me, Ryan. I, I love. I get have football every day of the week, and we are smack dab in that fifty days of football, my favorite time of the year. We had we had Tuesday night college, we got Wednesday night college, we got Thursday night NFL, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's awesome. I was gonna say I think Thursday night football needs a it needs like an official Thursday night football theme song. I think that's really what's missing. Really? Yeah, because Monday night football, you know, and it, 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 granted they try and remix it, and you know Sunday night football too. Sunday night football. Shout out well. Carrie yeah. Underwood. She made it. She yeah. got it popping. Uh, my crew's already. The crowd is psyched. All my ratty friends are back for Thursday night. Uh, I, why not just bring Hank Williams Jr. back? I think he had some mm. unfortunate comments, but people have probably forgotten about them. We need a rocking Thursday night football anthem. I feel like his comments were on brand. People maybe just weren't <laughs> up to speed on Hank. Well, Williams they probably Jr. weren't. Yeah, <laughs> aware of his uh, political views at the time. But uh, hey, yeah. Rush Limbaugh, come be on ESPN <laughs> and be edgy. Help us get some ratings. Whoa, whoa, too edgy. Whoa, Rush, what are you doing, man? Uh, the we irony were... is he was talking about McNabb. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> did you see the um, McNabb really getting people? Fu- did you see AJ Brown chirping at McNabb? What happened? This is a weird position to put me in. What do you mean? Because to me, as far as like key chess pieces in the divisional chessboard. McNabb is forever going to be the all time like blunder Eagles piece, right? He's the, he was this piece that kind of was good enough to give the illusion of something, but not actually be that guy. And yeah, I, I love hating McNabb. So I'm going to hate to have to agree with a current Eagle. So McNabb was trying to make it seem the offense was struggling because they're going out of their way to feed AJ Brown and he knows what that's like and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and then uh, AJ Brown quote tweeted that and was like, "Well, I'd like to respectfully point out our argument uh, that Jalen and I had. It was amongst friends. We sorted it out, and it was not about targets. And if you don't know what's going on, you of all people, Donovan McNabb, should know the media is just going to run with whatever you say." He seems like the guy who's trying <laughs> to do the media thing but doesn't know how to do it correctly, and then so he's just like, "Hot take, <laughs> yeah." And, and I mean, he he is good at creating controversy, but uh, but he, here's the thing: there's 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 obvious like just trolls like yeah. Stephen A, like Skip, um, Florio to some extent. Um, <laughs> but then you have guys who it's like, all right, so if you're gonna have a hot take, there's a certain way to craft a hot take. Maybe don't go after the fan base that is the only thing that would ever support you in your afterlife. Maybe yeah. don't go after the people that I, it, it's just not smart. 
Well, he was, he, and he's clearly jealous of other Eagles quarterbacks. Oh. He, was, he was jealous of all the oh. attention Carson Wentz was Which getting. Is very he like was bad mouthing Nick Foles at one point. <laughs> well, he's got that huge dick to deal with. Yeah. Well, I, I, basically, all you have to do, Donovan McNabb. We, as Eagles fans, we could have just been cool with McNabb. You didn't win the Super Bowl. You won a lot of playoff games. You you won a lot of division games. Had some nice wins. Didn't quite get there. Disappointing, but. You still, you still would have had good memories, but then he just goes out of his way to like shit on other current Eagles. What's your? It, it's really tough to hold him in high regard. Maybe some quick therapy. What's your favorite McNabb memory? Mm. I can start if you'd like. Yeah, go for we it. We were in the building. It was a beautiful night. Oh, come on, Ryan. Giant Stadium, and we watched OCM and yours sack him six times, setting a record. As a team, they sacked him twelve times. And I say I sp- helped spare your life in the parking lot <laughs> afterwards. So should be a memorable night for you. Yes. Uh <laughs> huge McDab uh night there. Well, I mean, Ryan, you should t- the the Giants are really nipping at the Eagles' heels with some of these uh sack records. What's that? Well, like single game sack record. Oh, giving up sacks. Yeah. Yes. Well, it seems not, to be not, getting it's sex. not the only team giving up gobs and gobs of sacks. I mean, Sam Howell is <laughs> on pace to break the car record by twenty sacks. Now it, it twenty it, sacks, Sean. The commanders are a very weird team because on one hand, okay, Sam Howell looks a little better than maybe people think, and and oh man, okay, it, it's certainly not the wash, certainly not the offense that is the reason for them losing, but the, the he, Eric the is also drawing up plays where there are just unblocked guys running at Sam Howell and lighting him up. So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe some teams were right to pass on Eric. When you, as uh, hey man, did you know sacks are a quarterback stat? <laughs> that's what, that's what you say when you don't like the quarterback. You blame the quarterback for the sacks, and if you like the quarterback, Victim shaming is. And if you it. like the quarterback, you say yeah, this offensive line can't get many times. It's unbelievable. And we are we are going to get. It's so easy to unpack these these nimwits that talk about football on a daily basis. I listen to some. I listen to so many people not know ball this weekend, Sean. Unbelievable. We are. Uh, we're going to get to Thursday night props here in just a minute. <laughs> uh, we're going to be joined by Moon off the machine, Manji. One more, one more, kind of just hitting on some uh, issues in the league. We didn't really talk about it that much in the Monday night game, but how in the world does Justin Herbert get this free fucking pass? I He's don't under, I don't understand it. Is it just because the, the they would rather focus on the Chargers fan who is also secretly a Vikings fan? If you went down that rabbit uh, hole, be careful, Sean. I, I thought you're trying I, to say. I mean, you, you. I thought the internet was being racist by saying all Asian women look yeah, alike. Kinda, but then yeah. uh, the woman admitted that it was her. No, oh, that's that's. And crazy. she's from Minnesota, and she yeah, has she, an AFC and an NFC. Yeah, team. yeah. So she's just a huge football fan, and it was a part of her journey. She said she's lived out here in Southern California, and she would never abandon her Vikings fandom. But now Feels she's fair. in love with the Chargers. Why is no anything one do- wrong with what she did? No, I not I, really, right? I I appreciate someone going nuts at a football game. It, it's not like she asked the camera to be put on her. I it, she's not Taylor Swift. Well, but people were trying to say she's an actor. Oh well, <laughs> I would think I'd be like, thank you. I was uh, my fandom is so pure. You thought I, I was am, acting. I am such a great football actor. <laughs> That's so method. I I just don't understand why is Justin Herbert not getting any shit? He missed a wide open Keenan Allen. A uh, bunch of missed throws throughout on, that you know game, why. and and he had an interception to end the game. Why? And it's on prime time at home. Why is he not getting killed? One city he lives in, no real fans. Two coach is an easier target. Three very good looking. <laughs> and and honestly, when you watch him play football, goddamn, does Justin Herbert throw a nice ball? It's like. When he can't complete the five yard easy pass, but then he just slings it on fourth and twenty nine for like a thirty five yard beautiful pass, it, I, it it could be. We have to maybe I'll reanalyze the K metric data. I believe it was maybe brought up, but he could be dumb also. Could be dumb. Hey, you would be dumb if you didn't sign up for our second chance survivor. You don't even have to be eliminated from your original survivor to qualify. We're just calling it second chance because uh, there's a good chance you've already uh, been kicked out of your regular survivor. It's very simple. One, it's fucking free. Two, winner take all $3,000 for. 
presented by uh, Corey Pinkston and Barking Dog Properties. Shout out to them. Dog. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survivor. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash survivor. I'm not going to explain a survivor contest uh, to our audience. What I will explain is that Little Caesars is the official pizza sponsor of the NFL. You and know, our survivor. Yeah. What? And our second chance survivor. What do you mean? They're the exclusive sponsor of the NFL and our second chance survivor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Little Caesars is here. Uh, I was just talking about how Thursday Night Football needs a theme song. What Thursday Night Football also needs is the perfect pairing. That's right. Little Caesars. Oh, it's Thursday. Uh, maybe a little thirsty Thursday. Crack open some cold ones. You're watching some NFL football. Little Caesars pairs perfectly with the National Football League. Order online during our Pizza Pizza pregame, one hour before and three hours after NFL kicks off, plus all day Sunday. I, I've had people writing in. Uh, is the pretzel crust? Is it? Are you? Uh, how much are they paying you to talk about that pretzel crust? Uh, I'll tell you this. I would talk about pretzel crust for free. That's how tasty it is. And of course, you got the Italian cheese bread, the Caesar wings. Uh, toss on a little two liter of Pepsi. Stuff crazy bread. They got it all over at Little Caesars, and you get it delivery or in store with their pizza portal pickup. So grab some friends, enjoy a few slices during the game. Little Caesars pizza, pizza. That four quarter calzone looks like a Star Wars like spacecraft. Yeah, it does seem like it's from the future, and I can see Luke Skywalker <laughs> flying down that tight canyon. What trying, are those trying are, to blow it up? I, I don't know Star Wars. What are the uh, Tie Fighters or what are uh, they called? It's, uh, it's one of those. I yeah, mean, it looks. Lot, like, there's lots of ships. What looks you, like the de- yeah. The <laughs> what are you trying to do to me, Sean? Uh, come X-wing? on, I expose you as a nerd. Ewok. Hey. Joining us on the line, you know him from the NFL Gambling Podcast, the NBA Gambling Podcast, and the MLB Gambling Podcast. He is. Oh, hello, Moonoff. Moonoff, the machine. Manji, what's happening, Moonoff? Raise your hand if your quarterback has thrown for more than six interceptions this season. Uh, what? What's that? Oh, what wow. you, why, How what dare is you? that? Are you coming out? <laughs> who? I assume that doesn't qualify, CJ. Stratton. Well, CJ Stroud. I'm not Stroud, aware of Jalen Hurts. CJ Stroud has o- raise your hand if your quarterback has five wins. All right, um, feel free to five raise, your qu- raise your hand if your quarterback has uh, two wins. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, Ryan, <laughs> come on. Which quarterback? <laughs> Desmond oh, Ritter. Is, <laughs> raise your hand if you don't know who your quarterback is, Ryan. Uh, I'd prefer if you referred to my quarterback as they. Des, them. Does he doesn't have a preferred pronoun? What what's happening, Moonoff? How you? Uh, I assume you were. I'm rocking my Philly shirt. And oh yes, Phillies I, are a wagon, Sean. Oh, they are, and I am on that bandwagon, riding the Phils. And uh, I, I assume you guys in the MLB gambling podcast have just been cashing one Phillies bet after the next. Yeah, uh, I was heavy on Phillies in game one. Game two, they got it done as well. Easy, what, 10 nothing victory. Uh, had them on the run line, had their team total over. Aaron Nola, over 15 and a half outs issued. So, hey, we're cranking it out every morning, 11 a.m., myself, Scott, and uh, Mal right now. So, join us. Uh, MLB playoffs, I, I will say this. I think the Phillies are going to win it this year, Sean. Let's go, baby. Sorry, just getting ready to rush the field. <laughs> oh, do, man. We, do we do that after the NLCS? I don't know. Oh, Raise your hand would... if your team didn't make the uh, postseason for MLB uh, this I'm, year. Uh, so here, I'm sure most of the audience will be happy to hear this, but so out on baseball. Oh, it God. feels so great. I'm liberated. Just don't have to think about it anymore. <laughs> it's a horrible sport filled with unathletic people. <laughs> well, Moonoff and I know and love. Uh, baseball, love, love Except winners. For Justin Steele's cool. He's yeah, he's Justin Steele. Justin Steele's Justin Steele's and may I say, very athletic, just like Justin Herbert. My uh, initial prediction of a Cubs Phillies <laughs> World Series not looking great because uh, the Cubs got couldn't quite get there. Oh, I forgot no, about that. No faults of Justin Steele, and I, I know Moonoff was also riding the Justin Steele Cy Young Award. It has not been announced yet. Probably not going to him. But man, considering he started out at two hundred to one, that it's been a great sweat. Yeah, it was. I mean, unfortunately, he had a couple of bad um, outings towards the end of the season, but I mean, it was a fun ride. He got down on, but I want to say 
I, I think it was down like two to one before he rolled off yeah. a couple of bad starts, but um, could have been traced back to when I uh, I took him at, out in Vegas. We, yeah, we were out at Circa, and, and we go, Justin Steele, he's a listener of the show. We gotta bet on him. And then we get up to our room, we're overlooking uh, Circa Sports, the the pool, and then he he gets lit up there. So sorry, yeah. sorry, Justin, we may have uh, jinxed you there. Yeah, I'll I'll take the blame for that. Yeah, we'll go back to it uh, right back next season. Oh yeah. Yeah. Any, anyone who listens to the show, I I instantly become a huge fan of Carson Steele, Justin (laughs) Steele, Phil Steele. (laughs) <laughs> we did. Yeah, it's a, it we, was, we have a connection with Steels for some reason. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, Carson not you related. Give me a little time to plug the product. Carson wasn't related to Lexington. We did no, also. Learn no, that. he. And uh, I wonder if he's Googled Lexington Steel yet because he was unfamiliar with that reference. Oh, so it'd be great. Back. Be like, yeah, no, he's we're blood related. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, probably have the same genes. All right, let's talk about it. Thursday night football props. We got the Jags. We got the Saints. Right now, the line's been. Uh, Floating around, yep. Saints got up to three point favorite. Now they're down to a one point favorite. It seems tied to uh, Trevor Lawrence dealing with that knee injury. Uh, he kind of like twisted it. Seems like he's maybe going to try and play. But uh, what do you what do you think, Moonoff? Does Trevor Lawrence may give it a go? He says he's optimistic that he will play. Uh, but everything that I read, I saw that CJ uh, CJ Beathard is getting all the first team reps right now. So. I think it, it. I think it literally will come down to a game time decision for tra, Trevor Lawrence. And like you mentioned, the light had has kind of been all over the place. I want to say I saw it at three earlier uh, today, and it's down down to minus one. So maybe the market thinks that Trevor Lawrence does indeed uh, playing this game. How effective it will be, we're not sure. But again, you're dealing with a knee uh, knee uh, injury, and you're playing what in less than four days. So yeah. Uh, yeah, for the, for the Saints to have been laying three, they that had to assume that Lawrence was out. Yeah, that was them trying to say, yeah. hey, or or if Trevor Lawrence plays, he's not going to be very effective because who? Uh, it, yeah. yeah, you're right. If Trevor Lawrence is healthy, that no it, way. That's it's a first. pick 'em. Maybe the Jags could even be favored. It's definitely not three. Yeah, I would be shocked. Which then begs point. the question: What's the spread? What's the difference between Lawrence and Beathard? Who, by the way, another Iowa quarterback. <laughs> wonder what he was. These guys. Wonder what he was up to oh, back. Yeah, in, he's. <laughs> yeah, was he there? I think he was there when gambling was legalized. He's lucky no, he probably no, like was, deleted his account. He, by he got drafted in 2017. He's oh, been out, okay. He's been out. He's for been him. around for a while. But gambling still existed then, so I'm sure he was gambling. All right, uh, Moon off. Let's get to the props. Who do you like Thursday night? Give us your first prop you really like. Yeah, I'll start with the quarterback. Um, on underdog fantasy, we have Mr. Derek Carr. Uh, I think that he will throw an interception in this game against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Um, I know he, I think he's only throwing two on the season, but if you take a look at the defense for the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, they've intercepted every single quarterback this season, except mm. for CJ Stroud. Um, and we know, you know, <laughs> CJ Stroud, uh, you know, he got off to that nice. hot start. He, he finally threw one last week, but this defense for the Jaguars. Uh, they're playing some good ball, and I think that Doug Peterson and 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 that defensive staff there has them uh, playing really well. Their secondary are ball hawks, and again, that that shows up, uh, especially when, like I mentioned, they've they've intercepted every quarterback except for once thus far this season. So I'm gonna go higher on uh, Derek Carr interception thrown over on Underdog Fantasy. Yeah, I feel like he's had some. Um... Yeah, he's had some. He's definitely thrown. Uh... How many has he thrown? You said two this season. Uh, yeah, he's only throwing two, but I think it's more of me just backing the Jaguars defense, um, you know, just because they've just been so good defensively this season. There you go. Shout out to the Jags. Yeah. Top I, 10 DVOA. Sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I could see that definitely happen. Kramer, what do you like? Throw, give us a prop here for Thursday night football. Jags have struggled against the slot. Chris Olave loves the to slot. operate out of the slot. slot. He's basically smashed in every game that he's involved in the game plan. Two games he inexplicably only had a combined three touches. So uh, yeah, it seemed the number sixty two and a half receiving yards. Which, by the way, on underdog you can also play sixty two and a half receiving and rushing yards. Same Ooh. number. No, thank you. I don't want an accidental <laughs> negative rushing yard in there. Screw we, this one. We, up. That is the ultimate conspiracy theory. Are they trying to trap us with it, that? It feels very <laughs> sneaky, and I'm not falling for the trap. It's literally a mouse trap with with <laughs> like peanut butter or cheese. Yeah, Jags twenty sixth against the slot DVOA. 
yeah. So just wanted to kind of lean into the idea that Chris Olave pro- probably going to be some easy stuff to be had. And I think if we reflect back on last week and what we heard D'Amico Ryan's talk about what he, the, like, kind of what they were looking to do and what they went ahead and did in, in stopping Kamara in the passing game and kind of allowing for some of this smaller slot stuff to occur. Uh, Olave had a big game last week. Didn't yeah. help them win, so I think we could see a similar outcome uh, this week. Olave higher, sixty-two and a half. Yeah, he was dealing with that toe injury. He also he seems a little out of sync with Carr, but um, what do you mean? I mean, he gets a ton of targets it, too. It's easy to think that until you go back and look that he had uh, ten targets, seven catches for ninety-six yards. No, last no, week. I, I guess it's I guess it feels close to him having an amazing, considering his target and his volume, and I think he's a really good receiver. I think he's close to. To getting so really in, in the two dominant. blowout games against the Patriots and the Bucks, both ways, he had a combined eleven targets. Of course, the Patriots game was the where the toe injury popped up. Yeah, he had eleven total targets. In the other games he's played, ten targets, eleven targets, eleven targets, and ten targets. And so, again, there's no reason to believe he's not going to be a huge part of the game plan here. So, also uh, interesting nugget. Uh, I'll I'll give it out. This I was going to save it for the pick spot, but Saints only playing their third home game. Oh, a couple teams like this this week that were kind of having that. Hmm, we haven't seen them well, at home. And, a bunch. and if you look at the uh, the Saints, especially the past few years, they've actually been better on the road than at home, which doesn't doesn't make much sense because usually the Superdome ended up being like one of those places back in the day when home field your power yeah. rankings you give them three points, you would even give Superdome like three and a half. But sure, but I guess also just four four road games in five weeks as well. Like they just finished yeah. that, so. Who knows? Depends on which side of the battle you you believe in. But what now do you got, everyone's everyone's talking about the Trevor Lawrence injury uh, with good reason. That probably is the is the bigger one. But all, Derek Carr also dealing with an injury issue. He's got some like chest soreness. Sounds like he's going to be he's fine. A pussy. Yeah, he's a huge pussy. He's dealing <laughs> with that. It sounds like he's going to play and he's going to be fine. But I do worry about his ability to push the ball down the field and take some deep shots. It's just setting up for an awesome, awesome Alvin Kamara check down game. You look at Alvin Kamara since he's gotten back. I mean, with the except he's played three games now, with the exception of the New England game where the game script they didn't need him to catch a bunch of balls. But that first game back, he caught 13 passes for 33 yards. Uh, then That's against incredible. then against Houston, he had seven for 36. He's just clearly involved. He doesn't get a ton of yards after the catch, but he gets a ton of work. Uh, Jags are a little banged up on defense. Jamal Williams has also been limited. I don't think they're going to use Kendra Miller a ton in the passing game. So Al- Alvin Kamara over 29 and a half receiving yards feels like a uh, smash, smash spot for me. What you don't like that, Ryan? No, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I think, I, I, I don't think I would play that. No. Okay. Well, he got 33 yards on 14 targets in one of these. Yeah. He he hit the over. It's not very efficient. No. You need you need a tremendous amount of volume. So yeah, and I think he will get that. Moon off. What's another prop you like? I didn't have anything nice to say, so I was trying <laughs> to say nothing. I, I don't know what's going on with Kramer if it's the Giants that are bothering this season, but I'll co-sign this with you. This is one of my plays as well. Alvin oh. Kamara over on his on his receiving yards. I mean, you take a look at the Jag uh, Jaguars defense against the rush. They they're I think they're top 10 in both yards allowed per game um as far as these amount of yards allowed per game on the ground and also um yards per rush attempt but if you go to the other side that the running backs have had a lot of success uh catching the football out of the backfield and like you mentioned there Sean that Alvin Kamara has been that guy for them coming out of the backfield I know last week against the Texans he got over this number um opposing running backs are averaging six and a half receptions per game Against the Jaguars and also averaging close to 40 and a half receiving yards per game. So I'm right there with you. Give me the higher on Alvin Kamara, 29 and a half uh, receiving yards. See, fellow sharp uh, moon off likes that. I'm happy. I'm happy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Are you, are you really happy for me? Ryan? I was looking up for some data to hopefully a uh, very uh, 11th against the running back. Team. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, again, I, I, here's what I would say. Here's how would I frame a, a positive statement about what you guys have just said. Yes. I would love to, I would make, I know it's early in the week and perhaps that the, eventually they'll, they'll surface, but I'd love a receptions prop. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like That's that what I was too. looking for as well, but I I'd pay, I'd pay a premium on receptions versus the yards. Yes. 
the but Ryan, the reception yeah. prop isn't out. We're doing what we can. But I like to give out winners. Okay, so do I. <laughs> what do you? What's your next? What's your next winner, Ryan? Well, uh, once upon a time, we used to give out razor sharp kicking props, and then the audience got upset. They turned on me. I couldn't and take so the heat. So we, we stopped doing it for a while, but I'm back. Somehow they've. Uh, I think we're back to having a question if underdog if the guys over there are watching the game. Yeah. Bl- uh, group A. Six points. Hmm? He's only gone under that once, and you know what he did in the game where he went under six points? He missed a field goal. Mm. So if he didn't uh, miss a field goal in that game, Blake Groupe, Groupe. <laughs> if if it was uh, Colby pronounced, but which by the way, I, I was listening back to the college episode from last night. Yeah, when he says Saquon, <laughs> Saquon, it just I just kept <laughs> hearing croissant. <laughs> anyway, uh, Groupe. <laughs> Blake group group a group. What a, what an interesting group. Like the fish, maybe group a so Grouper. higher than six points. Uh, no need to, for the handicap. Like I said, he's gone over this team can drive the ball between the twenties, like no other. And then they suck. And I fully expect the Jags to, I, I fully expect this to be a potential game where no matter what the outcome is, the saints out gain the Jags. Hmm. That's a prediction I'm, I'm willing to make for me. This guy is going to be involved. If you haven't seen the injury news yet, Jawan Johnson almost certainly out here for Thursday night football. That means second string tight end, aka the coach's coach's son, Taysom Hill, coming off a seven catch, forty nine yard game. Uh, Taysom Hill anytime touchdown at plus three twenty one. They throw the ball to him. Two. They do wildcat. Three. They hand the ball off to him. He's he's the he's a Swiss Army knife. Wait, is he the backup? If a Swiss Army knife wasn't uh, athletic, yeah, no, I mean, isn't he the starter? Uh, yeah, who's I don't the even, starter? What do you mean, I, I, Jawan Johnson? He, no, he's not the star. He's not play. He's not playing this season. Well, that was just hurt. a fantasy wet dream this preseason. <laughs> he's been hurt and banged up. I think it's a. It's going to be Taysom Hill and Foster Moreau. Foster yeah, Moreau is going to get in as there. Well. Yeah, and maybe the ghost of uh, Jimmy Graham might be floating around out there. Stay tuned for the first <laughs> touchdown market, but yeah, Taysom Hill anytime touchdown at plus three twenty. I mean, this feels what? What am I crazy here? That three to one for a guy they're almost they love getting the ball to, especially Jamal Williams is banged up. He's kind of like their other goal line option. What else are they doing on the goal line besides going out of their way to get Taysom Hill involved? I I, I this is a great, much better position. No, thank love you. this position. And guess how many touchdowns he has? Zero. What are we talking that about? That almost seems impossible. Of course he's gonna get in there. Almost seems impossible. Yeah. All over Taysom Hill stuff. Uh Moonoff, what's another prop you like? I'm gonna go a little chalky here. Um Travis Etienne, his rushing and receiving yards is at 84 and a half. Um, he leads the league in uh touches uh incredibly for the uh, entire NFL, I should say. But we kind of we're going back and talk about um, the injury to Trevor Lawrence. If if he does end up playing in this game, how effective is he going to be? But I think there might be a lot of rushing for Travis Etienne. It might be a lot of short uh, handoff or sorry, uh, screen passes or checkdowns for Trevor Lawrence. And Travis Etienne has that big game ability, right? To breaking out, um, whether it's a big run, whether it's a screen pass. And I mean, he's done it more times than not this season. You take a look at some of his total yards last season or last week. Against the Colts, 83. Against the Buffalo Bills, 184. He had 138 against the Texans. So um, I'm expecting a big game here from ETN. I like his rushing and receiving to go higher, 84 and a half. Yeah, I I, I always like playing the total yardage because then I'm always for a guy like ETN that will get yeah. involved a little bit in the passing game. I I would hate to get screwed because you never know. Oh, they're gonna throw a little bit more or those passes that actually. Are technically they graded as a run those swing passes and uh, especially if Trevor Lawrence is limited at all they're going to even lean on him farther or if, imagine if Beathard plays I, I I think if Beathard has announced the starter the uh, uh, doesn't this line go way up I think so yeah it does I think it goes back to three yeah well no and and I would think uh, ETN's yardage would go up because of the idea yeah. of hey they're gonna they're going to get him involved even more if if CJ Beathard is the quarterback. Yeah, I, I think he's another guy where I, I'd like the volume. And I, I wonder, though, I, I, 
This could be one of those games that pop off on some people's O line D line matchup charts in mm. terms of in favor of the the D line for the Saints against the O line for the Jags. I believe the Jags could be short a couple O linemen in this game. So again, I love the volume angle. I I would be cautious. I would be cautious to to see how well he plays the the offense in general. Worried a little bit about the Jags offense this Thursday. Don't want to wow. give away my pick yet, Sean. <laughs> All right, don't tip your hand. I do have a positive thing to oh, say okay. about the Jags. All right, Bring and it's, some a, positive it's a energy. former Giant. Evan so I, I went, I went and looked into this because the the DVOA numbers and some other like fantasy points against numbers suggest that the Jags are pr- or the sorry the Saints are pretty good against the tight end. Then I went and looked into it a little bit more, and it's like, all right, well, week one, um, Tannehill looked really horrible. Chig didn't do anything. Week two, they played against Bryce, and he he just was completely useless. So we almost have to throw out that data. We had a couple blowouts, so uh, we'll throw out Tampa and New England. And what do I have left? Musgrave six for forty nine. Schultz four for sixty one. Give me Evan Ingram higher forty one and a half receiving yards. I think I think there's some uh, some faulty data out there mm. just based on who they've played so far. And I I do think the way that the if the Jags are going to have success in this game. It's going to be off the play action to the tight end and the slot receivers. I think Kirk, if you're if you're looking to to play like Kirk anytime, it would probably be a fun way to potentially uh, be pro Jags in this one. But yeah, Evan Ingram higher, forty one and a half receiving yards. I think he gets there just like Musgrave and Schultz did last week. Are you worried about Evan Ingram and his ability to blow uh, blow catches in prime time? Uh, you just coming at me with a basic take. No, I, 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 I don't think that Evan Ingram is going to have a great game. Based on what? I, I just he's a tough guy to trust, especially yeah. I, I, but they, but they trust him to the point of you look at you say that and and he made that great catch last week, so confidence is high. He's not the same kay. guy he was trying. But you just look at the usage: seven targets week one, eight targets, eight targets, eight targets, eight targets, five targets. He's gone over this total uh, every week for the past four weeks, and, he, and none of those games have been explosive outbursts by the offense. None of those, none of those games have been explosive outbursts by by uh, Evan Ingram, he, it, and and it's especially if it's beat hard or or banged up Trevor Lawrence, what's he going to go after? Some of that lower A dot stuff, which is what Evan Ingram's doing. He's not yeah. running a ton of stuff down the field, and so yeah, I I do think. Much like your volume plays, this one probably requires a tiny bit of volume, but much like a Schultz got there in four catches, I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure he'd be able to get there in four catches as well. And based on his target share, I, I bet you he gets the four catches. I got a uh, I got a defensive uh, player prop here for Thursday night. This is based off uh, both. It seems like both offensive lines <clears throat> are actually pretty banged up. <clears throat> I'm going to look to the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars though. Trevon Walker over a half sacks. Saquon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All he needs is one sack. And it looks right now for the saints, both of the teams, uh, both of the saints offensive tackle, James Hurst foot and Ryan Ramchek concussion missed Tuesday's practice. And so did swing tackle Landon young. So they, I, I spe- Ram check, especially being in the concussion protocol. We'll see if he plays Landon young's Missed the previous two games. Maybe James Hurst plays, but I don't think he's going to be a hundred percent. Either way, Trayvon Walker is going to get some favorable matchups. If you're playing this over on Underdog Fantasy, uh, you can get this as a spicy play, so you get nice plus odds on that. And of course, UnderdogFantasy.com promo code SGPN, hundred percent deposit bonus up to five hundred dollars, hundred to one. Get those scorchers going. Spicy. But uh, Trayvon Walker over a half sack. He's for a guy who's. Number one pick overall. He's had moments where he's kind of kind of been quiet, but this feels the offensive line injuries alone. This feels like a good spot for him. Yeah, I I, I feel like we kept seeing him drop back into coverage last week. Yeah, they do some weird stuff with him, but he does have two and a half sacks uh, coming into this season. So I, I'm optimistic that this is a game where he can get it going. Especially like Derek Carr is. He's a, he's definitely one of those guys where if he doesn't have confidence that he can push the ball down the field, he'll definitely be a guy who turtles up, holds on to the ball too long. It feels like there's going to be a good opportunity for Trayvon Walker, especially, especially when you're getting plus money. Uh, Munaf, you gave out all three of yours, right? Yes, sir. All right. 
Uh, we got some first touchdown bets before we do that. Shout out to game time. Maybe you're going to Thursday night football uh, in the Superdome. I don't know what they call it now. Uh, they call it the. Uh, uh, does it have a name? Mercedes Benz Dome or no? That's the one in Atlanta. That sounds right. That's not no the Caesars Dome. Caesars Dome. Shout Is out. Is that to right? Them. I think that's. Although right. it's not Little Caesars. Although it could be if Little Caesars sponsored the NFL. <laughs> I'll call it the Little Caesars Dome. Come at me, attorneys. Uh, if, if you're heading to the Little Caesars Dome, maybe you want to uh, get some tickets to this game. Game time is the place to go. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Love game time. Hooked it up uh, when I went to the Eagles game. It was so much fun. Great. And it's just nice not to know, oh, hey, my friends, you know, you try and get a group of buddies. It's always last minute. Who's in, who's out? Game time is perfect for that. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code SGPN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create the account, redeem the code SGPN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And shout out to Factor Meals. Fall is just an insane time in my household, putting out content seven days a week. And I'm a horrible cook. And yeah, my wife does most of the cooking, but sometimes I'm in charge of the meals. That's a complete disaster until we got hooked up with Factor Meals. Man, you can make delicious meals in two minutes or less. Literally, I am a cooking idiot. I'm. I'm the Justin Fields of cooking. I could I could fuck up any one of these dishes if it wasn't for Factor. They make it super easy. And if you're like Kramer and you have uh, you know dietary restrictions, they got you covered. Very easy, uh, easy to make, delicious, nutritious, delivered right to your door. What more do you want? Ready in two minutes, no prep, no mess. Head to FactorMeals.com/sgpn and use code SGPN to get fifty percent off. That's code SGPN fifty at FactorMeals.com/sgpn fifty to get fifty percent. Off. All right, here we go. Now we're talking a little first touchdown bets. What do you got uh, for us, Moon off on the first touchdown card? Uh, I'll throw out a couple. Uh, first one, let's go with Rashid Shahid for the uh, Saints. First touchdown score. See that at 15 to 1. Um, he has scored twice this season for the New Orleans Saints, but he's been a great down the field threat. Uh, for Derek Carr and the Saints offense. So at, at a 15 to 1 price, I really do like that. Um, and then I'll throw out Christian Kirk, 11 to 1 for the Jaguars. Um, again, another guy that has seen a lot of red zone targets, another down the field threat uh, for this uh, Jaguars um, offensive attack, whether it is Trevor Lawrence or or or, or Mr. CJ there. Um, 11 to 1, I'll go with that. And then last one I'll throw out there. Why not Jimmy Graham, twenty-five to one? Yes, uh, let's... I, I, I like Jimmy Graham to find. Uh, I think he had the first touchdown, uh, not I think a couple weeks back for, um, for the Saints. Yep. But again, he's a big target uh, in the red zone. He's tall. He can just jump over guys. Twenty-five to one, I think, is great value. Hopefully, no one's holding him, keeping him on the ground, what do Una you mean? unable to jump. <laughs> Oh, I just he's a tall Hashtag tight end. If he, get, if he gets open, oh, I, I hope there's you're not. To, okay. uh, no, no, I'm just hoping he doesn't <laughs> get held down to the ground. Ah, well, I mean, hopefully they're smart enough to call a decent uh, play call when you get down to the end zone. There, mm. Derek Carr is a guy willing to. Uh, it seems like a guy who knows uh, how to uh, operate a quarterback sneak. I'm with you, Amun off the machine. I like Jimmy Graham at 25 to one. Unclear if Jimmy Graham still has that dyed blonde hair. He has caught one pass this season, and it was for a touchdown. Had a uh, interesting off season leading up to the uh, the start of the season, but they still seem in on him. So uh, I'm in on Jimmy Graham. <laughs> I did one Saint, and then I went three Jags because I I found a bunch of Jags at the price point that I felt was pretty interesting. First up, give me Brenton Strange. He is essentially one of the uh, other tight ends besides Evan Ingram. He's 30 to one. He's actually the only Jags tight end with red zone targets. Evan Ingram does not have a red zone target this season, which seems like some sort of mistake. But what that's telling me is clearly they have packages for strange. They want to get him looks. They like him in that 12 personnel near the goal line. So uh, yeah, Brenton strange 30 to one. And then my man tank Bigsby four red zone carries two touchdowns. They still have some sort of hang up about using ETN in the red zone. He's got mm -hmm. some work, but uh, considering tank Bigsby, like you look at like the number of his snaps 
and the number of carries inside the red zone. It seems like they really just love him near the end zone there. Uh, 25 to one. And then the other one I like Jamal Agnew. He's a, you know, what is he? Third, fourth receiver there in Jacksonville. He's 35 to one. I like him because Doug P the inventor of course of the Philly special uh, doesn't mind to get cute near the end zone. They have two design rushes for him inside the red zone, solid snap percentage. So if they're going to get cute near the goal line, Jamal Agnew could be the guy. So Jamal Agnew, 35 to one, that one felt like a pretty good price. Love that price. Kramer. What do you got? All right. So I, I have a line that says I'll, I'll do it. Actually I'll do it first. I had a line that says Jamal Agnew or thinking that you might take Jamal Agnew. Oh, wow. That's how sharp you are in the or, first touchdown market, Ryan. You're even able to predict what first down touchdown yes. bets I will make or Tim Jones, because these are the guys that will be filling in for Zay Jones who will be Ooh. out. Zay yeah. Jones also seems to run a lot of the stuff that Trevor likes to look to in the end zone. So if we get down there, I, I this is a pricing situation. They've really destroyed this market for me. And I, the fact that all of the guys uh, are sub 20 to one now, it, it's just, it's a sad day. You got to go to guys like J Jimmy Graham should be 60 to one. <laughs> he really should. They be. should be 60 to he one. He has what one is? catch. All right. So I'm going to go, I'll go Tim Jones. I'll let you have Agnew. Thank you. Uh, since we will both get credit for the hit. If it, if it happens, regardless, if, if we, it is fun it. when people slide into my DMS after Ryan gets a first touchdown bet, correct. And they're like, you're the man, great <laughs> call. And then we just go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, on the other side, it, it's gotta be tight. I, I thought about going foster Moreau at I 20 see to him one. The chat but seems to like him easy is suggesting foster Moreau, Steffi smalls like Kendra Miller. Well, I, Kendry Miller is interesting because I did also. Someone else in the chat was bringing up Jamal Williams. He's off the IR, yep. which means he can practice. I don't think he's going to be active for the game, but boy, he he certainly had that big dick energy in the goal oh, yeah. line if for he, the Lions. If he's good year. to go, that changes things. But right now, I would say he's still probably. But, but anyway, yeah. Taysom Hill was the was the pick. Um, Taysom Hill's great. He's the second. So this is what's crazy. If you look at usage in the red zone, he's the, he's only behind Alvin, which impressively Alvin Kamara, number one on the team, number two, Taysom Hill, not Chris Olave, not anyone else. So Taysom Hill's the play. The price, you know what? They didn't have. They haven't ruined his price yet. He's uh he's above the Mendoza line. And then the other two plays, give me both defenses. They're both thirty to one. It's Thursday night. Both of these teams are have injuries on the offensive line. Both of these teams have already scored a defensive touchdown and the saints have also scored a special teams touchdown. So I was, I was having the coin flip of, do I look to the no touchdown score? Do I just play defensive touchdowns system? The model, a couple of people said they were disappointed to find out there's a, there's a model here and it's not just my love of <laughs> our, our love of a backup tight end. Uh, there is a model, and we do love backup tight ends. That's where the model comes from, dummy. Jags, Saints, thirty to one each. First touchdown. Let's go. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, the defenses, and we're playing Tim Jones at forty to one, Taysom Hill at seventeen to one. Let's go. Which I see, I and I, I was just ch checking it because I saw someone drop a price. Jamal Williams, twelve to one. I saw fifteen to one earlier. So yeah, um, I don't know. I, I just don't think he's playing. But if you want to free roll it, I guess. Yeah, if if he you, what you worry about is if they uh, they probably won't activate him if he's not going to play. So no, he, and he'd have to get a snap, and you you're you're playing the goal line snap, and you know that's the one place he would get the ball. That is true. Uh, hey, we got our DJ and only bet coming up, but Moon off. I know you guys over on the NFL Gambling Podcast. You guys are also running a first touchdown, a free first touchdown contest. Yeah, uh, who doesn't love first touchdowns? You're especially at the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. But <laughs> yeah, uh, all you gotta do is leave a rating and review for the NFL Gambling Podcast, but also include your uh, touchdown prop bet, including oh. the odds, <laughs> uh, and then subscribe to the NFL Gambling Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, and the winner with the highest odds is gonna get a fifty dollar. Uh, uh, gift card to the merch store. So a lot of great stuff on the merch store. Again, 
Leave a review for the NFL Gambling Podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and then drop your anytime touchdown uh, prop bets in there. Include the odds. That's important uh, so we can uh, determine the winner based on the highest odds. We'll probably give that going probably to what? The end of the month there, Sean? Yeah, that sounds good. We, yeah. we got to find, we got to, we got to get some winners here. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm getting in this. Let's yeah. See. What are you, what are you going to fire off, right? Uh, well, I, I did. What will you, will you accept the last touchdown? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'm going to do some research before I leave the review. Then <laughs> I want to make sure I get the right one. Yeah. You want to, you got to get that, uh, get that merch. You know, I'm not loving week seven, but week eight, I'm really ready to pounce. <laughs> I'm going to drop a stellar review week eight. You know it's been a bad weekend uh, from the officiating crews when I look and see the the refs or terrorist shirts are flying off the merch store. That's always a sign that the NFL is uh, struggling with some of their officiating. It has the location bad. on where those people are buying the shirts from. It might be a little biased. All right, Chad is dying for a, a DJ only parlay. Of course, that's brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, their parlay optimizer. Love this thing. I can get lost in a good parlay optimizer. And uh, thankfully, I got a uh, Hall of Fame bets. Go to hofbets.com or download the app. Use the promo code SGPN. Get 50% off your first month today. Start researching, start winning with Hall of Fame bets. Hey, Moon off, you're a numbers guy. You got to love a tool like Hall of Fame bets, right? The deep data button. You're always grinding out props over on the prop cast as well. This thing's awesome. 100%. I mean, look. It, it it takes the work out of your hand. What what I mean? What are you yeah. waiting for? It, it's right there on the app, and they're giving us fifty percent off your first month. I mean, that's a win win. That's well, positive EV right there. I love some some people like using their hand. <laughs> so I just say, hey Ryan, if you want to use your hand, saying. that's that's per- well. Some people like uh, you know like when someone CJ, else uses CJ their CJ hand. uses his hand. <laughs> he, CJ know, does huh? use his hand, and he has that notepad of I'm notes. I'm touching Deshaun Watson. If you guys saw the, the what, what did you call it? The gerbil? Uh, well, so yeah, I I said uh, when CJ's in the studio, it reminds me of like a gerbil because he'll be like ripping out, uh, ripping out like paper, and there'll be like all these little shredded pieces of paper on the floor, almost like a gerbil's cage, uh, as he's just ripping through notes and and getting ready for the games. Uh, moon off. You are the <laughs> guest. Give us your D gens only parlay. Yeah. I was trying to find each quarterback to throw an interception, but Ooh. obviously we don't know if either it's going to be uh Trevor Lawrence mm. is going to play or not, but I kept it simple. It's it's 21 to one. Okay. Let's go with uh Derek Carr to throw an interception. Uh, each team to score a touchdown in each half. And then Rashid Shahid. Anytime touchdown score that gets you twenty one to one. I like how you said keep it simple. <laughs> There's five different <laughs> things. I appreciate it. I'm just gonna keep it simple, Bob. Okay, this is and shout out to uh, Moy Oxy in the chat. My desk is wet from drooling for a DJ and parlay, boys. You have to know when oh, to call. Wow. Love it. For me, I I like. I, I respect a a long parlay taken for the same game parlay, but for me, I found the sweet spot in the in the multi touchdown stuff. Just one guy to have two touchdowns, one guy maybe to have the first touchdown, something like that. To to me, the parlay and it's calling my name. Give me Tank Bigsby two touchdowns. <laughs> Moonoff, what do you think that price is? Seventy five to one. Oh, see now I should have said, what do you uh, think it is? 30 to one, 40 to one. It's 70 to one. But now that, now that Moonoff guessed 75 to one, cause Moonoff's a sharp, I should have asked uh, Ryan what the yeah. odds were, but yeah, 70 to one tank Bigsby. All he has to do is score two touchdowns. He they're close to making him their red zone back Trevor Lawrence. Maybe they're not going to want to use him on the QB sneaks. He is one of the guys they use for rushing quarterbacks and Stay tuned. If Beat Hard is announced, I may swap in uh, Beat Hard anytime first touchdown. I'll have to do a deep dive on him. But guys like Beat Hard, they're going to get an incredible price uh, for a rushing touchdown. And PJ Walker almost, he was running a little bit in the red zone, almost got that 11 to 1 anytime touchdown that we talked about on VSIN. So uh, Tank Bigsby, like the. to me, what makes it interesting is one, they clearly like him in the goal line, but two, there's just such a limited sample size of his play. Like for him to have a two touchdown game is not crazy at all. As far as we know, 
I, I, You're like we're talking about the depths of the ocean. What yeah, we, hopping in a submarine. Anything so? could be in there. Sean, Anything don't get be. in the submarine. Whatever you do. <laughs> uh, Ryan Hasty saying he's seeing sixty-six to one. Yeah, I, my model has anything over sixty to one. I think That's you fair fire. Price. That's you your fire. Fair Sean, on it's your, the it's your, fair, fair. It's your yes. fair price. It's a fun. It's a fun bet. Kramer, what do you got? That's a wild price. It's a great price. Great find. You were you were walking through the forest and you accidentally tripped over some diamonds. <laughs> All right, I got a couple variants here. Okay. The first You're like COVID over yeah, here. First, Ryan. the first strain, the basic <laughs> strain. Is this Delta or which one is this? This is Alpha. Okay. It's the first one. I assume that's how they name things. We got the Jags defense to score a touchdown. D- uh, sorry, Jags defense special teams. Okay. To score a touchdown. The Saints defense. That. Special teams to score a touchdown, fifty-five to one. Okay. Then we want to make it a little spicier because it's Thursday night. It's obviously going to be some sort of Taysom Hill eats game. Let's just add Taysom Hill single touchdown to that. Boom, two forty to one. Wow, so Taysom Hill and both, both defenses and Taysom Hill, two forty to one. And that that's not enough for me. Okay, though. here's. That's not enough for okay. me. Can I give you the last one before you critique? No, I was gonna, no, I'm not going to critique. I'm I'm going to help you diversify that bet. But oh, keep tell, going. tell me. This is a perfect round robin opportunity. Oh, 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 okay. You have three three bets that I think you 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 want all the various options of the parlay. You want the two defenses. You want one defense and Taysom Hill. You want the other defense and Taysom Hill, and then you want all three together. That to me is that's how you win. I, I like this idea, but I'm going to do it with one more option. Let's just say Taysom Hill gets into the end zone twice. Taysom God Hill, help two, us all. two touchdowns. Each defense scores a touchdown. <laughs> and you know how funny it's going to be if Taysom Hill returns a kick for a touchdown. Oh I, man! I can't Why do they not? Saves. They should have him return in punts. Uh, do you know what this price is, Sean? Five hundred to one. Two thousand to one. What? <laughs> Oh my God! So, you know, I'll uh, I'll work on all the different variants and I'll put them in the sheet. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 find a way to round robin this bitch. Yeah, make sure maybe you, I'll uh, add in Tank Bigsby two touchdowns. <laughs> Talk I, to your doctor before opening up the uh, Patreon sheet to see if Ryan's <laughs> variants are right for you. I don't want I don't want anyone catching one of these variants, Ryan. I don't want to have blood on our hands here over at SGPN. It's interesting to see what the uh, same game parlay engine grays out when you start. <laughs> okay, things overheating. You can alternatively <laughs> take a Tank Bigsby, Taysom Hill, and then both defenses. That's also two thousand to one. Okay, now just Taysom Hill, in and of himself, I think in the twenty-seven to thirty to one range. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's also For interesting. Two. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. that. Thirty to one in the in the two. <laughs> I'm just if you're interested. This guy in the chat's killing me. What? Uh, it's uh, Moy Oxy. I I don't know how to pronounce it. He goes more Oxy. I think he goes quote infect me with these juicy parlays, Kramer. I'll take them. Two forty to one. I like the odds. Give me that lock. A <laughs> lock. <laughs> I love it. I did try to go two touchdowns for the defenses. Mm. As soon as I click two touchdown for one defense, the other one gets grayed out. Oh, they 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 know they're on to us. They will let me go Taysom Hill two touchdown with the defense, but not <laughs> not two defenses. That's too far. Moon off. You're doing a million shows for us. What do we got coming up? NBA's coming back next week as well. What's on the docket? Yeah, NBA starts next week. Uh, we're still going through the awards markets this week. Uh, we'll have Defensive Player of the Year, NBA. Uh, sorry, uh, MVP. We'll do a little sharp off uh, with our um, win. Uh, sorry, win totals, best bets for the futures. Uh, and then next week, lo and behold, will be Monday through Friday for the NBA. So if you're a basketball fan uh, or a hardcore basketball fan, I should say that because people tune in after Christmas when the real season starts for those people, but <laughs> come tap in with us next week. And then obviously NFL gambling podcast, MLB, um, as we get closer to the world series and of course a prop cast, um, as well for player props. So it's that time of the year, October, we're all, we have all four major sports colliding at the same time. So my head is uh, spinning at times, but Hey, we're going to get it done for the Dijons. Are Let's we, go. are we supposed to do a NBA preview episode? It feels like we're yeah, in the middle off. of football what season. What happened? I thought we always do a. Uh... Well, we don't have to actually. I, I'm at, but I'm, I'm, I, we can we wait if you until, want. I mean, you guys. Should we wait until Christmas time and then do the preview? 
<laughs> yeah, that'll help my win totals predictions if we if we tape it in December. I, I think- mean, we could do it right now. I mean, Sean's gonna <laughs> pick the Sixers to win the title over on their win total. I like. In the I do like their. I yeah. I do like them. I can't wait to pull <laughs> the clip of Sean predicting the Cubs and Phillies to be in the World Series, and the Phillies <laughs> are in the World Series. No, it's gonna be great. I'm only one team off. Moonoff, give uh give people. Well, I wanted to ask Moonoff about sure. my. I I do have some uh, Webb and Yama props. I took all his unders. What do you think? Points, rebounds, blocks. I mean, he's looked really good in preseason. Shit. The only thing, fuck, that would derail or help right, you in this un- case under two under two and a half blocks, under seventeen and a half points, and under eight and a half rebounds. I hate the points one. I think he's going to score like 25 a game. Oh no. The he rebounds. So strange out there. I think the rebounds are going to be close, but I mean, he's a Frenchman, who knows. All right. They're man. not Let's known for their happens. effort. <laughs> ask exactly. uh, ask ask the Nazis. Wow. Whoa, Jesus. No, I've been just reading a lot of World War II. Jesus. The French could have oh, could have stepped up a little you're bit. You're saying though. that from a history perspective. Yeah. Not a Okay, I thought I thought you were sharing an opinion. What do you mean? You're just you're just sharing facts oh, of history. I, just, I mean, I you could just French... hedge that, Ryan, by just taking him to win Rookie of the Year. There's plus odds out there. Yeah, no, definitely not doing that. Moonoff, before you go, and uh, Maury saying I'm a need DJ and NBA parlays. Oh, I, I'm NBA I, gambling podcast has you. Oh yes. Yep. W- what about? Uh, do you have? What's your? Uh, what give? Uh, give the folks a uh, NBA win total you like. I really like the Atlanta Hawks on their over. Uh, for mm. the win, uh, for their win total, I know the last season they had a lot of friction between Trey Young and their head coach. At the time, they brought in a uh, former Utah Jazz head coach. It looks like a coke head, Quinn Snyder. Uh, but the guy, <laughs> he, he's a winner. He wins during the regular season. Uh, so I really I like them that. to win the division. And then also, if you want to parlay that uh, with their win total, I, I think that this is going to be a big year for the Atlanta Hawks. Forty-two and a half. Feels I'm, I'm getting down on it right now. All right, and, and we're gonna remind Moonoff. Hopefully, we're, you're right, Moonoff. Moonoff's Hopefully. always right. That's why word. they call him the is, machine. This is my one. Should I put an NFL side bet on this? And just this is my one NBA <laughs> yeah, bet. Yeah, just on the randomly end. be all in on the Atlanta Falcons, Atlanta, uh, the Atlanta Hawks. But yeah, that it would be fitting that I turned into an Atlanta sports fan. Let's do it. I'm in. <laughs> you need it. Ryan's just desperately trying to find uh, just, something to root for. Are you already on the Texans over? You might as well put in the Rockets. No, over I'm just too, trying. I'm like trying to make content. <laughs> Not like you and just pick uh, nothing but Philly. Producer Josh's ears are perking. We started talking about the NBA. Look at him. Oh yeah, he's oh, chomping he, at the. He bin. loves that bullshit. <laughs> he loves that bullshit. Hey, Moonoff! Thanks for calling into the program. Make sure you follow Moonoff on X, aka uh, the app formerly known as Twitter, at Sports Nerd Eight Two Four. Subscribe. NBA gambling podcast, NFL gambling podcast. Get those reviews in. The prop cast, MLB gambling podcast, finishing strong. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean at Second of the Money Green. He's Ryan. Colby would want me to say that college basketball is better. Kramer, let it ride. <laughs>